<sighs> Probably should have emptied that before I moved it. It's pretty cool, isn't it? I'll, um, I'll explain about this at the end of the video. So as you've probably guessed from the title of this video, I'm going to build a unit to store the toilet today, which is also going to double up as a seat. I'll tell you what, I totally, totally underestimated the weather today. Now in my previous van, the toilet was just on show, but I've decided in this one, it's literally just gonna go in here. And I've actually got a plan later on where the, the bench that's gonna go on the other side of the van will actually uh, join up to this one to make almost a full size single bed. Well, I say that, it'll probably be about the same size as an air bed. But the first thing to do today before I start building this is I'm gonna box this off and create a little doorway so that I can get through to the garage if I need to. <laughs> Now a lot of you gave me a little bit of stick for wearing flip-flops in the last video when I was cutting up wood. So today I've decided to wear my safety crocs. That'll be my walkthrough to the back of the van when I want to get into the garage. I might put noggins across here, but there is going to be a bit of ply that goes right over the front of this, and that will square everything up and make it nice and sturdy. This is all pretty solid anyway, but it's not structural, it's literally just a partition. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Now it's time to build the unit for the toilet. I also forgot to mention that I have boxed in one of the wheel arches. Unfortunately, I've not done that side simply because that's the side that all the electrics are going to go on. The inverter, everything's gonna be up against that wall. So I don't wanna start boxing anything in yet until I know exactly where all my wires are gonna run. close now there's a reason why I haven't put the front bar on yet because if I did it right at the top like that you kind of feel a bit awkward just sort of sat there on that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop it and drop it down just a tad just to give me a little bit more leg room and I think that'll work pretty well just about there so I've actually cut down a smaller piece of wood just so that fits in better and now I'm just trying to work out how low I need to do it because at the moment if I put it up here I'm not going to be able to lift it out. So it's going to have to be pretty low, almost like there, just so that I can get, and then it's still going to be a bit tight for me to get my hand in there. The other option is I could just have a door here that opens so that I can access this quite easily. And I think that might need to be what happens because it does get quite heavy and I, the last thing I want to do is be lifting it out of the top when it's really heavy. Change the plan because I've really struggled to get the toilet out of there then. <sighs> I've not even screwed anything down yet, so it's going to only be worse. So what I'm going to do, take away this cross member. Take away this cross member at the back. Lovely. I'm going to replace that with this longer piece that's going to sit at the back. So there'll be a slight overhang. 
and then that'll give me enough room to get my hand down behind because there's the thing that you don't realize to get the toilet out you've got a there's a handle on the back and a handle on the front and i was concentrating on the handle at the front and then i realized i couldn't reach the one around the back either so that's why i'm now doing this it's all trial and error when you build furniture i tell you I, you know you make a vision in your head of how it's going to look and how you're going to put it together and then the functionality of it it never goes that way like anything in life it's okay to make mistakes it's just how you remedy them okay and that's actually worked quite well because i've got a gap now for when i run my wires for the kitchen i do have a bit of conduit here which runs from the back of the van that just means that i can run a couple of extra bits of conduit with some wires in them if i need to but just temporarily while i haven't got a kitchen to screw this part of this seat into, I am gonna put a cross beam in just to keep it all nice and square so that if I do sit on there in between now and when the kitchen goes in, it's not gonna fall apart. I'm still not I'm still not 100% decided what I'm going to do with the front of this yet. So what I might do is I might cover this in ply just to tidy it up. It's got to be done at some point anyway. moment of truth I put a little cross beam across here as well just to uh, frame that doorway a little bit now that should sit nice and flush against there cool and that overhangs just a little bit just to keep the mattress on and that is there sometimes sometimes you've just got to take a break and work out what you're gonna do phone your dad and say help and that's what I did it's now another day. What I've worked out with the help from my dad is that to enable me to be able to slide this out, I'm gonna change these uprights here for these. I'm gonna remove the bottom one completely and then the front that goes along here, which will be a piece of, which will be a piece of nine mil ply like this, will be screwed to a cross beam that will be there and then that will all just come off and it will be clipped in behind. That's the plan. So just a few minor alterations and then this should be good to go. <laughs> Flathead screws, hate them. Why do they do it? Yeah. That seems to take most of the play out as well, which is good. Oh, a little bit creaky. I'm sure it'll be fine once I've sat on it for a little while. Now I've got a little question for you. Flat head screws. Why are these even still a thing? I mean, why do they even still exist in the world? This is what you get whenever you buy like any sort of like hooks or anything like that. And I just don't understand why they just don't put a Phillips head screw in there. But anyway, I've binned them off because I got so worked up trying to screw this in that I've replaced it with Phillips head. So let me just show you what I've done, okay? Toilet is in here, you can lift this up, do your business, sit down, stand up, whatever you wanna do, right? But I also wanted to make it so that obviously the front could come off so that I could easily pull out the toilet. The only time I'm ever really gonna need to take the front off is when I need to empty the toilet anyway. So this is how it works. Behind here, we've got two hooks. That one, that one there, hook that off. 
lift that out and that's away. Got two bits of dowel that go into the floor and then literally I can just pull the toilet in and out if I need to. Then reassemble is really quick, put the toilet back, that slides in, push it down, two hooks, one goes on there like that and the other one goes on there and that's pretty secure now and then somewhere to sit. So now that the toilet's done, I might do the other side of this. So what I'm going to do, do what I did last time, and scribe this wall and then cut out around there. Nice and easy. And there it is, that's that bit done. Now the reason why I did it in two parts was so that I could scribe both sides. So as the walls in this van aren't straight, did that side, scribe that side, did that side, scribe that side, and then literally this will just get some cork in the middle anyway, so you won't see the joint. It's amazing how much of a difference just putting a bit of trim on it makes it. Obviously this still needs to be painted at some point, but I've not decided whether it's gonna be white or a different color. Now I would say that was a pretty successful couple of days. And as far as the badge goes on the front of the van, I actually had these gel coats made up and I don't make these personally. There is a company that make, made it for me. They've sent it out to me. Um, I did pay for it, so it's not sponsored. I've put the one on the front I don't like the way that it looks, so I'm probably just gonna change that grill completely anyway and put one of the ones that has the big Ford writing on it. But I am gonna do the back one. If you are interested in any of the products I use, whether it's the toilet, whether it's the reversing camera, whether it's these stickers, it's all on my website, which is www.lovesundays.uk. And you can find it all there. And if you're enjoying this series, you can follow the full playlist right there. And now if you don't mind, I've got to go for a banging sh I'll see you soon. Cheers. Cheers.